Hello and welcome to the Beauty Talk Podcast. I'm Letitia Bishop, your host, a professional makeup artist and beauty writer. Thank you for coming back and listening. If you love learning all things beauty, please subscribe and say hi to me on Instagram at Letitia Bishop. Today, I invited fellow makeup artist Jamie Smith on the show simply just because I thought maybe a fun chat about beauty and makeup products together would be fun and something you guys might like to have a listen in on. Jamie came to Hong Kong from the US in 2007, leaving behind a successful career in fashion where she designed for large American brands in New York City and then moved into a few years later as a creative director and trend researcher role, working with fabric and color for coming seasons. All these experiences is without a doubt helped her start and sustain a successful makeup artist career of the last 12 years. And that's where I met Jamie here, being in the industry in Hong Kong. So thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. This is my first podcast. Yes. Yeah. A lot of my guests are their first one. Excited. Right? I know. <laughs> so tell us, um, how did you get started in being a makeup artist and why? And how did all that start for you? Well, I always had the art background in design and being an art major at university. And I always loved makeup. And I kind of wanted to do it while I was doing fashion in New York. I really wanted to learn how to be a makeup artist to go to beauty school, but wasn't really in the like financial situation or just was too beauty busy. Beauty school couldn't, yeah, yeah, I couldn't stop my job and still live in New York and go to school. And so. New York's expensive. Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the opportunity to move to Hong Kong for my husband's job, and I said to him, "When if we if I move with you there, then I am." not going to do design anymore. I want to go back and become a makeup artist. I so that was the agreement. That, that was the agreement to get me here. So I did it. I, I went to school here and then just kind of started posting things on social media and getting jobs through my friends and then doing a lot of testing to meet photographers and stylists and hairstylists in the business and then making contacts that way and just grew it to where it is now. Yeah. Wow. So which school did you go to in Hong Kong? Because English like, yeah. teaching makeup is not a lot. So it doesn't exist anymore. Mm. And it only existed for this one course. Um, oh, wow. Her name is Mai Lee. And she's a quite successful uh, makeup artist in the UK. But she's originally from Hong Kong. And she decided she, there were so many people that were contacting her that there's nothing taught in English. In yeah. Hong Kong, especially at the time, so many years ago. So she ended up saying, oh, well, I'll come there for the summer and I'm going to do it. I mean, this is originally where she's from. She like was visiting her family. And then we were just like credited out of her school that she ha also has in London. Oh, so. What perfect timing for you to yeah. be here looking for a course at that time. And then her, the yeah. school was there. Yeah. yeah. There Amazing. was only five of us. And I was the only one from Hong Kong. Everyone else or living in living, Hong Kong. Yeah. Everyone else is from all over Asia that okay. came in for the course. So. I was the local, even though I hadn't lived here that long. Yeah. <laughs> you were the... How fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then how, how, what was the transition like for you um, going from testing and building relationships with photographers and people to actually like getting some paid work? I guess it was also like trying to find my footing of what part of the industry was interesting to me. So whether I wanted to kind of focus more on bridal or private clients or um, editorial commercial. I really wanted to try to do more editorial commercial that was interesting to me. It was more like the industry that I was in prior. Um, mm. And so I just like tested, 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 and then just literally just contacted people like until I was annoying, until they would <laughs> hire me <laughs> and they would remember me. And then it just kind of was quite slow in the beginning and then you just get contacts within magazines and then they know they want to call you for that. I mean, the editorial side and commercial side is really fun for me, although that's also not where, like, you make the most money. Absolutely. <laughs> not in Hong Kong anyway. Not in so Hong you Kong, can't, yeah. You can't live on that, so you basically will do anything else that anyone throws at you if, if you're available. Mm -hmm. But um, And mm -hmm. I love my private clients as well. Yeah. Like, that's always, like, a really good, fun thing, like, just making uh, your everyday woman like feel really beautiful and it does you know. feel good I think we're in a real similar boat there with we both are very passionate about editorial and doing 
big photo shoots and productions, but um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's hard in Hong Kong to get into that side more of things because we are not um, Chinese speaking. Yes. That also hinders us a lot because they want to work with teams where they can just, you know, speak Chinese, understandably. But, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, because when I have been on sets like that, it is a bit of a weird day because you're not sure what the vibe of the set's like because, you know, some sets can be really serious and some everyone's just joking and having fun and you don't know what the vibe is or how to reply because they're all speaking in right. Chinese. And they speak to you and you're like, okay, I'll just be formal. And right. then they think you're a bitch or something. And then also you don't know the direction necessarily the photographer wants. Cause he's, or if they're angry they're, or if yeah, they're not. Or they're like, speaking in if Cantonese. It's going well, or, yeah. And then you're like are they not happy with the makeup like should I step in and fix something yeah, yeah so there is that there's definitely that but there's also advantages of being a western oh, makeup artist there is yeah there but not so, so much for the fashion and yeah yeah s- like big job work there is advantages for our private right market yeah. clients it's a huge advantage yeah. actually because the really. aesthetic is a bit different um mm. so there are people that specifically want western makeup artists it is interesting to kind of try to figure out what your path is and you have to be flexible especially with covid especially yeah. with covid <laughs> we take anything we can right yes, exactly <laughs> yes no it, you just i felt like i've kind of unintentionally gone down a path of more private clients and yeah. more teaching and m- m- um, like private lessons and master classes um i love it as well it's still doing makeup and it's still talking about something we're highly passionate about yeah. but you do miss that editorial yeah. things and creating and and actually I'm doing one tonight so you still can do it but you have to carve out time for that and really focus on actually trying to create some beautiful art right. with a team but yeah. it doesn't pay the bills. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that was my other question. What kinds of jobs do you mostly like working on? And I guess it's editorial, fashion... Yeah, I mean, I think so. Although I do, like, I do feel like my go-to favorite makeup look to do would just be, like, pure beauty, like, natural beauty. Yeah, me too. Um, Yeah, I think that's just, like, there's something about, like, looking at somebody's face and then kind of taking the shape of their face and just enhancing it, you know, hiding flaws and enhancing other things and making them look the best that they can look instead of having to be given a brief and having to, like, follow it and just try to do exactly a look on whoever the person is. And it may not suit them, that look. That's the worst, actually, when you've been, you know, tasked this thing and you're like, it's just not going to work for this type of person. Sometimes you're like, well, if you wanted that, then why did you pick this person's model? Exactly, I know. Sometimes we... It's helpful if the makeup artist is in the casting process. I know, right? I always think that. And in the picking of image process because there are things that we see as well so much like lighting which will make let's say you have like strong lighting coming from one direction and it'll make like one brow look really really dark and the other one it does doesn't it yeah yeah and then but the photographer or stylist might not notice it but but we notice what we're working on exactly (laughs) but photographers should be aware of that but the they should light it beautifully. They should light our makeup and the subject beautifully. But when they're selecting the images on the computer, yeah, I love to, be, especially when I can, sometimes when my husband yes. does the photos. Yes. But sometimes they don't see it. And they, for instance, like a hair is on the face and it's like in the same line as the brow and it's making the brown brow look all the way down. Right, right. Like if you look at it, for, and they don't see that. They see that... Which is important as well, seeing that the person looks good and confident. Like the overall image. Yeah, but, but maybe the image, like, just next to that image was the one where the brow looks better. Right. <laughs> right? Yes. And that's... I'm always looking at that as well. Yeah. So a few little fun things we can talk about. Okay. Um, what are your must-have products in your makeup work kit, which you know, can differ from our own products in our own handbags. And, you know, there's each... It's always interesting for me as well because each makeup artist love and work with different products to achieve our results. Yeah. Um, Most of the things that are must-have in my kit, I like to have in my own makeup bag as well. Oh, you do? I do. Ah. I was was trying to think about it earlier, and there's only a few things that don't overlap. Yeah. But um, let's see. In my kit... Um, I'm a big fan of cream bronzer and 
actually, I love cream products altogether. Um, I just feel like a lot of clients like have anti-aging concerns when it comes to makeup, and they yeah. want to kind of look, you know, their best. And working with cream products is sometimes a little bit more friendly on on skin, so it doesn't sit in fine lines as powders would. So I really love cream blushes, contour sticks. Um, but my favorite... Which ones are they that you like? Yes, my favorite is Chanel Le Beige. Oh, yes. I, I have I'm that saying one. that right. Yeah, I know. Le Beige. Le, Le Beige. Beige. Where do you buy yours, actually, in Hong Kong? So I buy it online. Yeah, me too, because yeah. you can't get it here. No, well, because there's nothing like tanning that's very good that you can get here. They just like, You go to the Chanel counters and they don't even know what that product is. No. I ordered it on Harvey Nichols online. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I do. I do the Harvey so Nichols or... Um, Selfridges, I yeah. have the like where you pay oh, once the during good the year shipping. and then you get free shipping the oh. whole year. So I do a lot of makeup from there as well. Oh, and they have that's all worth the it, is it? Yeah, it's definitely that? worth it. Especially the amount of makeup I buy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you buy way more than me. <laughs> I buy way little... more than most people. Well, yeah. <laughs> even for makeup artists. Even for makeup artists. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bit of a habit. Um, and then I had to mention that Benefit, their Hula Cream Contour Stick, the color was like my most favorite, but it's discontinued. Aww. And I've tried buying it like on, on eBay. eBay and everything. I can't find any. But So it was like a, a wind-up stick? Yeah, just like a cream contour hula. stick. Was it Hula? Yeah, it was color. Benefit. And the Benefit. color was Hula. Oh, yeah. and they had it in a cream form? Yeah, and it was a perfect one. But I finally, maybe last week, finished the last of what I had. It was really sad. Actually, I opened the stick and I scraped out like yes, at the bottom did. like a yes, lipstick and I put it in a little tub so I can still use it. <laughs> but I could... found a dupe. Yeah, that I, think I was about to say, closest... have you taken that tub into Sephora? Yeah, so I can't like... find exactly, but the um, nude sticks, you oh, know, they yeah. do the sticks, their Bondi Bay is quite similar. It's not okay. the exact tone, but it, it works. It's a good yeah. dupe. It's a good dupe. So that's definitely something that is in my kit. Let me see, what else? Um, eyeliner. So MAC, their eye cool pencil in a specific color, Costa Riche. And it's like the brown, kind of like a warm brown yeah, color. Yeah, that's a popular one. I've heard of that one. Yeah, so yeah. And that one you can't get in Hong Kong either. Um, the MAC in, don't get me started with MAC in yeah. Hong Kong. Well, they drive me bonkers. Yeah, they don't carry things here. And they're, if they do supposedly carry, it's always sold out. Always. <laughs> the, the range that MAC carry in Hong Kong must be... 50% of what they have in the in the West. Oh, for sure. 50%, it, it, especially in terms of artistry products yeah. that you can get in, in the UK and America. It's just yeah. crazy. Um, so, yeah, so I always order that specific color on the Selfridges website, and then they ship ah, here. Ah, yes, because there is a Mac. Um, yeah, because yeah. there's Mac on there. And that's definite, like, use it as an eyeliner. I use it, like, to shade over and then just blend as an eyeshadow and then put shadow on top and... For like a smoky yeah, eye. Yeah, for a smoky eye. Color is just like my go-to brown. Mm -hmm. So that's a definite must-have. Um, another thing that was discontinued. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> And sad. I like literally can't live without. I still have one tube left is the NARS Tinted Eyeshadow Smudge Proof Base. And ah. it's literally like... I, I get it in like the uh, the darker color, so it actually works almost like a as a starting for a, yeah, shadow. Yeah, starting yeah as a base color on the eye, but it also nothing budges. Like the you can go swimming and it like nothing budges. And is it the same with the new like the current so Nars base? Now they ju now they it's have just it. The color but they difference? just have just the one neutral color. Yeah, they used to have it in a few different colors like medium, dark, uh. and that. And I liked the darker color because then you can use it. And it was like the perfect kind of brownish base for a smoky eye yeah is so, it just in hong kong discontinued or no, everywhere everywhere oh. i think i think the closest i found to dupe it is um the laura mercier theirs oh. which a they, stick their stick pens the um it's not a stick it's um like a what do you call it like the Rabbit foot, claw foot. A doe foot. foot. Yeah, yeah, doe foot. Doe foot, yeah. <laughs> Rabbit foot. Rabbit foot. Actually, I was listening to a beauty podcast the other day, Fat Mascara, and they had on someone that was a kind of, I don't know how you would call her, like a beauty historian or something yeah. like this. And they said that a long, long time ago, before the, the maybe early 19th century, they used rabbit's feet to put on blush. Really? Like an actual rabbit foot. 
Yeah, like the ones that were lucky and we used to carry in my backpack when I was younger. I'm a lot older than you, so you don't know. Oh, <laughs> no, like an actual foot. Like take a rabbit, cut its foot off, preserve it somehow, and then that's, use that to put on your makeup. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's pretty disgusting. I'm glad we have makeup brushes. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, uh, Kim, uh, the KKW lip liners were my favorite colors. Like, the, they just, she had so many different nudes. What do you mean, did? Because she stopped doing her beauty line. It's supposed to come back again. Oh. She's rebranding. Yes, I might have heard something yeah, like that. Yeah, so I feel like when she rebrands, it will come back. She'll have the same thing, but it will just be like packaged different differently. I think she just changed the company behind the scenes, right? Like the provider of the products. I think something. I think also she's not KKW anymore. So mm, yeah. It was like a thing, so I'm not sure. A few yeah. contributing factors. Yeah, so hopefully she'll bring those back. What are your favorites? Um. I really like the the foundation that I we've talked about it before the Mac um, no Studio Fix Fluid oh <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah so that's a fairly new one right no no oh, no no that's an old Studio one. Fix Fluid is in the glass jar it's quite it's just the foundation I've used for a long time and sits well on everyone's skin it doesn't ball up or I just never have issues with it and I can shear it out I can yeah. make, I can pack it on and you just get safe with the foundation. I know, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever used that one, funnily yeah. enough. Yeah, so because you I have your it. one that works. Yeah, I think I always, usually in my kit, I have the um, IT Cosmetics oh, the uh, CC, CC yeah. because I feel like it's quite buildable, so it can be full coverage, or you can use a little bit and be lighter. I like her uh, color range is pretty big, even for Hong Kong, Yeah, because it's hard to find it is, color range. It is, it is. I'm currently also having my kit, the um, Charlotte Tilbury foundation that's been discontinued the magic one magic it's quite it's quite a full coverage foundation yeah. but i've been enjoying it i used um last year as well the new nars foundation the matte one in the oh, yeah. squeezy i didn't like that no. it's a bit it's quite dry and it might i might bring it back out again for summertime for clients yeah. but it's quite full coverage quite dry but yeah the mac one is just is that what you use on yourself no, I don't actually. No. no. <laughs> what do you, well, you can't always have the same thing, right? So I like to sometimes spend a bit more money on myself because you have to have a lot of I colors agree. in your kit. Yeah. So unless people are sending you things for free, yeah. you have to think about that as well, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> actually, my kit for my foundation is you only carry two or three. Oh, okay. And I mix and it. And then you mix. I can't be bothered to carry more than that. Yeah. You're I have that two smart. or three. And then, the, like, three different styles of foundations. Right. But each range, I just have two. Actually, the MAC one, I have four in there. But, yeah, and then I would just mix. But then I have, like, I always carry the Bobbi Brown BBU palette, which is the, okay. yep. the um, Bobbi Brown stick stick foundations. So yep. I always have all colors just in case. I don't really love that foundation formula. It's not amazing, but I, I can work with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another product I really love to have in my kit is the Sephora or just any under eye brightening pen. Okay. I love to have those. The, you know, the like kind of illuminated yeah. pens. Yeah. So Sephora has a good one? Yeah, Sephora has a good mm. one. Yeah, they have a few ranges, but the, the first color is always out of stock a lot. I love to have that. And I do love to have the Chanel bronzer. Yeah. I always have that. Actually, another one I love from Sephora is... Uh, it's a bright, it's a compact brightening powder and it's yellow. Oh, the banana one. Yeah, and yeah. it's like quite more yellow than most banana powders. Um, it's quite sheer, but for on set specifically, I just, I'm constantly like touching up with that. It doesn't like, you know, if you put too much powder on, it just gets like too powdery, but mm -hmm. if you brush that over, it takes off the shine and it kind of like brightens every time. It's kind of like oh. something I always, always have. Okay, maybe I should try that one. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Okay. Hopefully they sell it in Hong Kong. I, I usually buy like a couple at a time. So in when you're back back home. Yeah, when you used to be able to travel. Yeah, remember that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, okay. But what is the difference in what do you have in your personal makeup bag that you don't put in your kit that you save for yourself? Is there anything that um, sticks out for you? The only thing that stuck out that I was thinking was just I usually don't use a lot of compact powders in my kit. I have mostly loose powders, mm. but in my bag, 
I carry a compact powder because like on the d- yeah, on the go yeah, like day in to my day. Purse. Yeah. Yeah, I carry it. A- Loose powder is a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit much. So it's and I much. like the um the Fenty blotting powder. Oh yeah, that one's a good one. Yeah, it has a little universal. powder. Yeah, yeah, it's very universal. So that's something I never use in my kit, but I use personally. I really like it. I don't know why I don't use it in my kit. I think because I use that yellow one from Sephora in my You're kit. You're reaching for that, is, right? Yeah, yeah. And that one and the Sephora one doesn't have a, a sponge in it or anything. So, already, yeah. Yeah. So this one already does. So it's good. It's perfect. Exactly. I love the Benefit Minis, like the little um, blushes. I keep uh, that yeah. in my purse all the time because okay. they come with a little brush. And they, do. Just, they do, they yeah. do. Benefit has great minis. Yeah. Minis are great for handbags. Yeah, I always save minis for traveling and yeah. mini handbags. I have so many, but uh, they disappear a lot because I have an 11-year-old daughter. I could imagine. <laughs> she must love mom's makeup bag. Yeah. Is she how into makeup is she into? She's very into makeup. Yes, oh. she loves it. And she loves stealing all my makeup and my brushes. How it's is a she at applying? How is she's she? really good. I mean, yeah. she's getting really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you sometimes have to be like, babe, that's not what I can for you today? I try not to. I just, just kind let of her like explore. Yeah. Well, we all went through that stage, right? Yeah, we all didn't right? have like an amazing makeup artist mom to be like. No, and she and she is. Oh, she's got a lot of confidence. She's like, look at my cat eye. This is amazing. Well, it's not, but it, I will never tell her. You <laughs> don't. Oh. <laughs> You know, you, she's not yeah. at the stage where she's really leaving the house with it on. Oh, okay. It's so just she's just playing around the house. I mean, if she was, like, going to school with it, maybe I would help her, but <laughs> let her figure out her way. Plus, with tutorials now, you know, like she TikTok can, and YouTube yeah. and everything. She's I know, we didn't have that. in no time. I know, we didn't have that. Growing up, I would have this, um, I had this cheap, like, multi every color palette right and I would work at a retail store after school and I would wear like a different color eyeshadow every day in like a different area on my eye so sometimes <laughs> it would be like underneath sometimes it would be like here and I just wish I had photos like you just didn't have many photos I would always do my hair in a different day and my boss one day would be like Letitia you don't ever wear the same hairstyle or makeup look twice in a row and I was like <laughs> Yeah, why should I? Yeah. I don't know how good it was looking. I can't remember now. I know. I used to have a book. I had like a makeup book. Don't ask me who's, who was the makeup artist or who it was. And it was probably something very generic that like, I got Bobby at a Brown. school fair or something. No? Could have been Bobby Brown. Kevin um, I remember I had a Gemma. Kid. Yes. 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 I had one, her, but that was a little bit later, not when I was really young. But yeah, I used to look at books to try to kind of figure out makeup. Yeah. Do you remember the encyclopedia? That's yes. how we figured everything <laughs> out. Yes. That's how everything was figured out. Okay. Um, what kind of makeup styles or what area of makeup on clients and models do you hate doing and wish? Oh, good question. I think my least favorite, if I have to say, out of anything is individual eyelashes. You don't like doing those? No. The faff. Yeah, like I to, love the way it looks. Yeah. You know, I recommend it highly, but I don't like doing it. It's like, I don't know, my hand always starts shaking when I have to do it. <laughs> I, like, struggle. It's definitely my, my Your weak, weakness. My biggest yeah. weakness. We all have, like, we yeah. all, yeah. I actually... I always try to, like, get a really natural-looking strip lash in there if they'll let me. So yeah. So I don't have to do the... <laughs> it's quicker. It is quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Which brand, do you, which strip lash is your favorite? Oh, that's a good question. I buy a lot of Ardell ones from mm-hmm. the U.S. I like their new ones. They have um, the natural, okay. like the, 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 I don't know what you would call it, but like that line. Yeah. And they're specifically natural. From the Whiskies um, line, probably yeah. natural. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're really nice. Or I just like getting the ones I don't even know what the names are from Sasa, like yeah. the Japanese and Korean The Japanese ones, ones actually, I really like because... Yeah. Some you know a lot of people have small eyes and they just yes, work so they have the small really ones. well. Yeah. You don't have to cut, especially if you have Asian clients. You don't have to cut the ends yeah. of them, and they just kind of fit on their eye perfectly, and they taper off at the ends really nice. They, the Japanese ones are really nice. I actually really, I I don't mind doing the individual lashes. Yeah, I kind of get them on there quite quick and. Because it just looks so much... It does. It looks so much more natural. More natural. And they don't complain about, oh, this is poking me in the eye. Yeah. And you've got to take it off and recut it and put it back on again. And it, it eliminates all that. So yeah. sometimes I think it's better. Um, for me, I hate liquid liner. Yeah. I don't I love don't that like either. It. That would be my second one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like a gel liner with a brush. Yeah. 
yeah. I need to do that more because sometimes like if you can get it right, it's like quick, done, good. Yeah. But then if you get it wrong, you're going to use the Q-tip with the MSL and it's like smudging everywhere. And Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you are like, I don't know how to fix it. I'm just going to have to make the other eye look, go back and do. Yeah. yeah I mean, the same problems that people have when they're doing their own makeup at Yeah. Home, right? We're not like magicians. Yeah. You know, we just have the same tools. We yeah. just do it more often. Yeah, and then, um, you know, sometimes clients, like, open their eye in the middle. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. You get the transfer. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay looking down. Yeah. Yeah, the gel, the gel with the brush is, is you, you have a little bit more maneuver. You can yeah. move it a bit better. I just haven't really found one that lasts as long as some of the liquid, liquid liners. Liquid, yeah. Like, I like the Chanel one, uh, um, but okay. I feel like it comes off more. More, yeah. I like, when I do eyeliner, I mostly like to use a gel pencil and smudge it out. Yeah. That's yeah. my favorite way. It just looks more flattering on most people yeah. than, you know. If well, you it have doesn't a, have the shine that, yeah. I, I kind of like, that's one of the things. I don't like when liquid liner has too much of a shine to yeah, it. Yeah, that like wet paint yeah. look. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Especially mm-hmm. for photos, it can look yeah. a bit Yeah, it catches bit the light. Weird, and look, yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, um, so we have a few questions from our listeners that we asked on our Instagram. Okay. Do you have any favorite makeup brands? I mean, everyone asks us this, right? If you could just use one makeup brand, you're like... Oh, gosh. But, okay, what are a couple, like, your go-tos you're always looking for? Um, My go-tos. I love NARS. I like the pigment of, like, all of their shadows and blushes. And overall, they just make, like, really great products. So they Norris do. Norris is one. a good one. Um, Out of stock a lot in Hong Kong, though. <laughs> yeah, but so is everything, really. It's a running theme in Hong Kong. Yeah. I'm telling you, girls, buy your makeup when you go. <laughs> yes. But you know what? There's so many places you can order online now. There is. Where, like, when yeah. I first moved here, that didn't exist. There was no online ordering anything, no less makeup. I just like so. to touch things and yes. feel it. Yes, I know. Even when I do client shopping, I will go into Sephora, hopefully, and I can feel it and look at it. And then I order on the website, Sephora, on the app. Yeah. Because they always have more stock there than yeah. in the store. Yeah, definitely. So it's a bit annoying, but I do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> besides for... I do love Fenty, actually. It, I think the colors for Fenty are kind of... Um, I don't think I could do an entire, like, couple of people's makeup with just Fenty. But there's so many specific products in Fenty that I mm, love. Like, I love their is. gloss balm. I like their eyeliner pencils. I like their highlighters. Mm-hmm. I like their primer. I like, there's like three of their brushes and my favorite brushes. I was about to say, was there, is there anything Fenty I've used that I don't like? But there is. I didn't like the foundation. The foundation, yeah. Yeah, I the one like the in the squeezy tube. Yeah. I haven't tried the other one, I don't think. But the squeezy tube one, that's meant to be the hydrate yes. one, is it? Or the or his, or one of them. I think there's two squeezy tubes, or I might oh, be making it Oh, is there? It's up. the more older oh, one. Yeah. I would say I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I just sat in my pores. I've really never easy. bought any of their foundations. Yeah, no, that's not true. I had one in a tube, but I felt like it was a matte one. Maybe it was but a I matte. That's why I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else from Fenty I've liked. I have the cont- like the amb- the stick in amber. That's yeah. a good yeah. gray. I really recommend yeah. that one because it's very gray ashy if you're doing. Contour, yeah, the contour, sticks, yeah. yeah. The matchsticks, yeah, yeah, yeah. I often don't do like a lot of contour. I just kind of do it with bronzing for people. Yeah. I just feel like it's. And if you go into um, the MAC here, that contour shade sculpt from MAC that we always use, yeah. they don't have it. No. They don't have it. You can only buy, literally, there's no contour powders in MAC, only yeah. a palette, a full on palette. Right, it's right. It's like. Yeah. You are MAC makeup, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Trust me crazy. I mean, really, Bobbi Brown does good um, matte tone things. So, like, for for neutrals. Yeah. So, for that's always a good go to to keep in your kit or. And in Hong Kong, Bobbi Brown seems to be really popular with like our range of clients. There's not one makeup. Uh, consultation and lesson I do with a client that doesn't have some Bobby Brown yeah. in her makeup bag. Yeah. They all have Bobby Brown. I guess because... They have uh, a good method of selling things, I think, on their counter. They, yeah, I everyone think, has it. I think her beauty idea and aesthetic is that you kind of like do... You know, you're just enhancing. Yeah. So, no, I love you know, her aesthetic. Like, there's no yeah. crazy colors on it and anything. That just maybe kind of what works with, like, most of our clientele. So that's why. But they do have, like, really good brown, different color browns, eyeshadows that are matte, and different, um, like, 
bronzers that are matte, matte. that you can use to okay. sculpt. So have have I, that's those. probably like a go-to for that too. And the benefit ones that don't have any. Because I like a good matte bronzer to just use as sculpting. The, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah a matte bronzer, yeah. not not a not a shimmery bronzer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a friend that bought the new makeup by Mario um, eyeshadow palette. The yeah, matte, I have it. The matte. Oh, you have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she said she loves it. Do you yeah, love it? I really like it. Ah, oh, okay. I yeah, it's I good. Should. Actually, I love his eyeliners. I think she said that too, or the lip pencil. So I used the, yeah. the black, and then there's two different color browns. One's like a really rich one, and one's a little bit lighter. And I use on myself and in my kit. That's like my favorite eyeliner right now. Okay. So I've been using that probably for a good six months, and everyone says it doesn't move. Like on me, it's hard for things not to move. I have very oily skin, and yeah. no matter what I do, things move. <laughs> I think I touch my face a lot. I do so, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and summer. Yeah. Well, and Hong Kong's <laughs> weather, like, they, they just, you can't make products that stick. They don't Hong make Kong them. Weather, no. They're it's not, not humanly possible. It's not. And if there's a cosmetic scientist or formulator out there who wants to give it a go, come here. I know. Try to formulate something that works in the Seriously. summer. We would love you. Yeah. I realized why, like, everyone on Instagram and YouTube and everything have, like, perfect makeup all the time. I, when I was in... Vegas. I was like, because it is completely dry on this yeah. side of the world in Vegas and in LA. I'm like, so your makeup doesn't move. It doesn't. So it doesn't. You do look like that all day if you put it on. <laughs> and here it's like, I look like that before I leave the house. In the Just. Summer, and then, yeah. If I've done any type of housework or any moved around yeah. moves. Yeah. Sweat is the, it's a lot of sweat in summer. Yes. A lot of sweat. <laughs> Um, do you have any, another question we've been asked is, uh, like makeup brushes, is there particular brands or styles that you love to use? So I'd say, uh, my newest one that I'm really into is, uh, she's actually a makeup artist that I started following on Instagram. And then I did an online masterclass with her. She's in Australia. Her name's Tanyel, oh. um, Tanyel Jai or J, okay. J A I. Yeah, so Tanyelle just came out with her her own line, um, and I ordered them from Australia. It took a little bit of time to get here, a little bit longer than they kind of said, but she just started this brand, um, and I love them. So I got a... Yeah, yeah. I got a, a like a for cream contouring and foundation brush. Oh, it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of almost like a kabuki brush, but not as kind of hard-packed as a kabuki brush. Um, I got a lip brush that on one side it kind of has like a diffuser brush almost, which is kind of nice if you don't want like a really thick line, which is kind of one of her signature things that she does. And the other side has like a more flat um, lip brush. And then, yeah, and then I got a like a brush for highlighter. I'm always looking for new brushes for highlighter, for powder highlighter. The like circle fluffy. Yeah, I just feel like everything I buy... It never looks like exactly the way I want it to. In the brush shape, you mean? Or that applies how it applies. That's, yeah. uh, Zoeva have one. Yeah, I love Zoeva brushes, and they're so reasonable. Very reasonable. Mm -hmm. I also like Sephora um, Pro brushes. Okay, I've never tried those, so that's good I don't know know if there's many available in Hong Kong, but in the state, there's like Sephora brushes, and then there's Sephora Pro brushes, and the brush handles and the brushes are just quite different, and they're longer, because you know how... The longer brush yeah, is right. nice for us. Um, yeah, they're, they're good. MAC brushes are fine, but yeah. Mm. yeah. But the wave is good. I have MAC brushes in my kit that I have from 12 years ago, so yeah. they are still lasting. So that's a really good thing for a brush through all the washes that we have to do, especially. Brushes last for ages, yeah. I think. If you look after them well, then I have brushes that have I've had for over 12 years as well, before I was a makeup artist yeah, as yeah. well, from a brand in Australia, um, Napoleon yeah. Cosmetics or something. Yeah. yeah, I bought a brush set from them when I used to work in the, in the, in the shopping mall. I yeah. bought a brush set and I still have some of them. Do you like um, my Kitco? I haven't bought them, but I... Okay, so that, that's besides for these new... Yeah. I love their brushes. Yeah. Love, 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 love. Probably my favorite. Yeah, definitely. And we have a question of how do you clean your brushes? Do you have any tips? How do you? So I use brush cleaner that I buy on iHerb. 
<laughs> I know you're a huge fan. <laughs> I always watch your unboxing. Yeah. Right it's a really popular content, I'm telling you. Yes. People love it. I'm sure. I love iHerb. <laughs> So I, yeah, I use a brush cleaner and I soak them in like as hot water as I could possibly get in the brush cleaner. And then I take them out and I have, I usually use actually the Beauty Blender Bar Soap that you, either comes with the little Beauty Blenders that uh-huh. you buy, if you can get like the set or that you buy separately. And then I take, especially the ones that are powder, I don't need to do this step for, but the ones that have any kind of cream product in, I kind of just like roll it over the actual bar of soap mm. then can help finish washing it out the bar of soap will really help get yeah and it doesn't have to be the beauty blender one i just i think you could use any kind of bar soap i just have a lot of them that have come with yeah so i have them around the house and then lay them flat or hanging over the side of because they will dry yeah. faster that way because the air yeah. will yeah but i just especially in hong kong on a kitchen towel a yeah. paper towel yeah and all the time, wash them after every client. <laughs> I, we have yes. talked about this before. Yes. yes, I wash them after every client. Um, I don't wash my own ones. No, as me often neither. At all. Um, but yes, my brushes get washed after every client. And yes. I'm constantly like, yeah, buying more brushes so then I can be more lazy and like not yeah. have to wash them. Yeah, yeah. And you have like a few clients and then they're all together and you don't have What to happens with me is I always buy a new brush and I'm like, okay, I'm buying it for my kit. But then... I keep having to take it out of my kit and then clean it to put it back in my kit. So I just buy another one for myself. So, yeah. So there's like doubling up and then, yeah, it just gets out of hand. I have so many brushes. (laughs) It's helpful, though. Some days where you have a lot of clients and you're like, I'm going to run out of brushes. I don't have enough brushes for this many. A last minute booking, you're like, I didn't wash my brushes. So. I don't think yeah. we can ever have too many brushes. No, that's what I tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's our job, right? Yes, exactly. If, it's like, I'm going to do some, I have to go to Sephora. Oh, really? It's for work. I, it's not for me. Or yeah. like you buy, you, it's not for me. It's not, or there's a Sephora delivery at the door. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, it's like, oh, you haven't even opened it. I was like, yeah, because there's nothing for me in there. It's for my clients. It's not exciting. <laughs> oh, um, what are your thoughts? We have a question on... What are your thoughts on semi-permanent like, tattoos and brows and lips, stick to makeup, or what do you think? So I am not a fan of tattooed makeup when it comes to like eyeliner, lipstick, anything, but I don't hate on a microbladed eyebrow. <laughs> so I can't say that I don't like anything that's semi-permanent permanent because I'm dying to get my eyebrows microbladed. <laughs> Again or for the first time? For the first time. I've never had it done. Yeah, yeah me neither. Yeah. No. So, and I don't, but I want to be really, I think because I'm a little bit picky, so I want to be quite specific. I don't want the whole thing done. I just want the specific areas that I need it done. So, um, so I'm all about that, but I say absolutely not to getting your lip liner done. Or it's becoming getting, more and more popular, though. It is. It is. I mean, I think they have perfected it now. It's different. They do... You don't do people. I see people doing like the whole lip. More yeah, it's more about pigment. putting a yeah. shade, yeah. like a light shade of pigment. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I. I don't hate that. I don't no, like. I hate it. I'd be scared. But. Yeah, I think it's a. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Eyeliner, I don't like. That would be terrifying, but I do see it on people, and it looks as long as you don't do like a wing or anything. Yeah. I would really say no wings, just along your natural lash yeah. line. Oh, just so to define the lashes, but <laughs> yeah. And I have tattoos. Yeah, so I'm so not, scared not scared of like of needles. No, just, but around the eyes, <laughs> it's pretty close. Yeah. I would love to do the brows, but well, anything to make your life more easier. Yes, but I have lighter hairs, and you could just see any work that they've done yeah. instantly. There's no natural hairs to cover it a yeah, little yeah. bit and make it look like, oh, do I have a brow tattoo or not? Right, right, like, right. Yeah, she's got a brow tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've but yet to see anyone do brows like mine that I absolutely yeah, yeah, you, love. The lash extensions? Yes. Best thing ever. Yeah, you have those on right and now. I've had them for years, but I will say this. They ruin your lashes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not going to lie. 150% they ruin your lashes. So I started, I think, after I had my son, so maybe nine years ago. And you haven't stopped? You haven't had a break? No, I had like a break for like three days one time. And <laughs> three I, days? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I looked at myself and I was like, oh my God, I look like I died. So I You mean you went in and you got them all the little wispy ones removed off? I'm taken off. I'm like, I'm going to let them grow. And you lasted three days. Yeah. And then one other time since then I did, I did do like two weeks and I did, which is huge for me. And I did lash growing serum and they did start to grow a bit. Also, they, for some reason, when you get them removed, they're very straight. Like they're very short and they're very straight. Maybe you just forgot what yours looked like. I don't think mine were this bad. These were definitely like, they were never that bad. (laughs) But then they kind of relax a little bit, I think, after a while. Or the lash serum was really helping. Couldn't tell you what it was called though. I forget what brand it was. And then I was like, ah, forget this. I'm getting my lashes back on. <laughs> I did it once in December, in December, this, like this last December. Yeah. I had them and they looked great for a week, week and a half. Really loved them. I got really natural. Like you could almost, cause I was a bit scared for the first time. I, yeah. I have a very fair face. I didn't want anything too dark. It was fantastic, but I hated them because they're just, I didn't, they're annoying to wash your face. Well, take yes. off makeup you have to get used to that yeah. like when I go swimming I have my lash protectors is what I tell my kids they're goggles <laughs> but like I can't go under the water without my lash protectors. I love that new name you just <laughs> elevated goggles yes. also you get lasherexic it's a thing so once you have them on you're like these are your first time you get them on you're like they're huge oh and then more. you go back and you're like actually I'll take more I'll take yeah, more and like yeah. the ones I have on now which because of uh, everything been closed I have they're like at the end like they okay. really need to be done but they're usually like quite full and long I don't think they're full and long enough anymore even like when they first do them and I say to my people I've been going there for years every time do you have anything bigger and they like laugh they're like this is the biggest that we have <laughs> but you get like lasherexic you see yourself in the mirror yeah. and they don't look as big as they you think you just come accustomed to them. Yeah. And other people are like, no, Jamie, they're really big. And I'm like, are they though? Are they? Are you sure. <laughs> <laughs> have I guess you haven't had the lash lift then. I have not because I've had always these on. had these on. Yes. And I will say this, it hinders a bit of knowing what mascaras are the best. Oh yeah, you can not test them really. Yeah, so I mean I, you can use them, but yeah. So I use uh, bottom lash because I've got blonde bottom eyelashes. So I use bottom lash, but you don't really get the same like testing it. Yeah, yeah. And like what you're looking for in a bottom lash mascara is like something. Yeah, like I'm loving the Byredo one. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the the waterproof one by Byredo because I would normally like probably get like dark underneath my eyes from from yeah, the mascara I get it too. use. This does not move. In fact, it's quite hard to take off at night, but it's fine. It's fine with me. With yeah, control. I would rather have that than have hand eyes during the day. But but yeah, for, for mascara, I usually just have to read reviews, buy it, and try it out on my clients yeah. <laughs> or friends. The lash lift is, that's my favorite yeah. thing to do as a treatment to make yourself look better without having to wear much makeup. Yeah. It's uh, especially for blondes when they tint and lift the lashes. It's, yeah, I don't wear mascara for like a week. Wow. See, habit. I wasn't like this before I started doing them. So yeah. if you are going to get lash extensions, be aware. Be aware. Yeah, you have to commit. Although, you know, they're really good. Like if you're going to get, like if you're going to have your wedding, you could do them for like the month and then have your honeymoon and just have them. You can then take them off. You don't have to get addicted like I did. No, you can have self-control. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell it's a great idea to get the lash lift if you're going on holidays or something to the beach so you don't want to have to faff with lash curlers. And they curl them up. It curls so much more than what you can ever do with a lash curler. Right. It's so bouncy. You just look so awake because you can get a – you can get a C shape or an L shape. Okay, yeah. And last time there was a miscommunication, they did C, and I was like, I don't think it worked. And they're like, oh, because I was C, not L. And I was like, oh. once you go L, you don't go back. And yeah. It's like they're they're up. Your lashes are really. Yeah. And next time you go back, you're gonna be like, what's more than an L? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can they get higher and more perky? Yeah, because I had the C, and I was like, this is not the winner <laughs> for me anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, I think we've. Uh, chatted a lot and enough yeah that was um great what i want i have a question for you because you had asked me earlier and i was just curious so what products do you have your eye on that you really want to buy oh i watched a video yesterday um my friend jessica wong this is what popped into my head maybe not what i like super want to buy but the i don't actually like this brand very much or use it much the tart 
called brow wig. It's a brow um, mascara. Oh, okay. Like Benefit Gimme Brow. Yep, yep. Like that, but from Too Faced? Tarte. 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 Oh, from for Too Faced. Or Too Faced. So I use the Too Faced Brow Pomade. This one is in a stick, so they call it like pencil and pomade. Oh. Might have brought it with me to show you. I'm not sure, but um, that's what I use on my brows now. Love it, but it's always sold out in Hong Kong. It wasn't when I first tried it, but now it's kind of out. It's a pencil pomade. How yeah, does that pencil work? Pencil pomade. I think it's just the texture of it. It's quite make it just lasts and sticks, and you don't need a couple products. So you apply it like you apply a it like a pencil, and then it's kind of just like a little bit sticky until it dries. So it's almost a little bit like a pomade. Anyway, I feel like I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> we really, really could. Uh, maybe come back for another round in a few months or something, another episode. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you for coming on and chatting with us at the Beauty Talk here. Um, if you guys want to find Jamie, you can find her on Instagram at Smudge Makeup Artistry. I will leave her handle down below. And, yeah, bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find details on everything I mentioned on the blog, The Beauty Talk. I'll leave a link below for this episode's post. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the newsletter so every episode is delivered directly into your inbox. That way you'll never miss an episode. I'd love to hear from you and see what you think of the episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Letitia Bishop or I have a private Facebook group which you'll also find a link for down below. Please don't forget to subscribe on any of the top podcasting platforms like Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. If you liked this show, please send some love by writing a review, and I'll see you in the next one.